second. Good afternoon. Welcome to our virtual town hall meeting. We decided to hold this meeting today in consideration of the end of the semester wrap up that I know all of you are underway in doing. So this virtual environment should allow us to get more of our campus community to participate in our town hall. And the intent of the format will provide the opportunity for you to submit questions, um, give kudos to your colleagues if you wanna do that while we're online. And I encourage you to engage with all the presenters on the screen today by asking various questions. And we're prepared to answer those questions. And for those questions that we will not have an answer for, we'll make sure we get those updated for you. So I hope everybody is doing well. And before I begin, please allow me to extend a thank you to all of our ASU administrative professionals on today, which is National Administrative Professionals Professional Day, recognized nationally. Hopefully all of you will agree that we couldn't do the work that we do without the support of our administrative professionals. So thank you for all that you do. And as we approach the end of the semester, I also want to recognize the unceasing, unceasing push of our faculty, staff, and students. I know the last couple of years have been very hard, but thank you for continuing to fulfill the mission of ASU. It is important to note that some of our joint successes, like the Undergraduate Research Symposium, Graduate Faculty Research, um, our student recognition events that are going on this week as well are all successes for Albany State. We also, just a few weeks ago, celebrated Founders Day. We welcomed the USG Board of Regents to our campus. We hosted a successful Blue and Gold Scholarship Gala, and in just a few days, we will celebrate commencement on Saturday, May the 7th. So each of you are an important part of our campus success, and it is because of you and your commitment to our mission that we can accomplish our goals. In 2021, we introduced our strategic plan, the standard. It outlines the four goals that we are focusing on as a campus. Those goals include student access, student success and access, institutional sustainability and responsible stewardship, partnership and economic competitiveness, and finally, leadership and employee engagement. These goals were developed based on your feedback and your input. And so soon we'll be asking you to help us yet again by developing more specific goals that are actually important to the area that you work in. We wanna ensure that we're able to successfully complete the strategic plan. So you will hear more about this in the next few months as we actually ask you to help us develop more goals. So on today, and on today's call, you'll hear from three members of the cabinet and they will cover a couple of items. And let me just highlight what those items are. We'll have Dr. Peters to talk about the new university college and what's planned for this fall, Dr. Peters and VP Johnson. You also hear about our innovation and other projects underway that were funded by funds from the Higher Education Emergency Rescue Funds that we call HERF. You've heard us talk a lot about that. And so we wanna talk about what you submitted and the projects that you're actually doing right now. You'll hear about our impact on the local economy through various partnerships. You'll get an update on the faculty staff compensation and classification study. And we'll talk about our adjusted, work, our adjusted summer work schedule. And then finally, I'll give an update on physical affairs and the work that is currently underway to ensure sustainability in that area as well. And then last, we'll also talk about our newly elected executive members of the staff council and the faculty senate. So after hearing this presentation, I hope you feel as optimistic and excited about the current status of ASU and encouraged to be a part of the future of our institution. We have a lot of great things going on. So we're gonna start with goal one, student success and access with Dr. Peters, the Provost and Vice President of Academic Affairs and VP Kenyatta Johnson, Vice President for Enrollment Management and Student Success. Dr. Peters. Thank you, President Frederick. Provost Peters and I are delighted to share more about the University College and our new living and learning communities. The University College has been established to address persistence and retention rates for our students and particularly our freshmen. Many of, many of you have heard that in fall 2018, we implemented an integrated student success model. One objective of the model was to address concerns with our freshman retention rates. In fall 2017, our retention rate was only 55.4%. With intentional focus on student success, 
we were able to increase retention to 74%. The data show that we had an opportunity to enhance our transition programs by addressing academic deficiencies in the first year and lowering the academic suspension probability for students before they complete their first 30 hours. The university college and learning communities are additional resources that we're adding to our existing toolbox to help our students succeed. I will now turn it over to Dr. Peters to provide an update and more details about the University College. Thank you, VP Johnson. The goal of the University College, the goal of University College is to support first year students at ASU as they transition to college, particularly in an environment that has produced crisis related challenges because of the coronavirus response efforts. The need for a University College model at ASU has been intensified because of the pandemic. So University College at ASU is going to touch the heart of every first year student. It will be the one place for first year students by providing academic and non-academic academic support, consistent policies, collaborative teaching, academic advising, tutoring, monitoring, and mentoring to promote persistence towards timely graduation. For ASU students who are in transition, some are not privy to financial, technical, and other critical resources their first year in college, and this has been exacerbated by COVID-19 challenges, protocols, and guidance. At ASU, our data, our institutional data, and our low success rates of our first year students, particularly underrepresented minority students, support the notion that these students are academically unprepared for college level coursework. So for the university college model, students will be co-enrolled in a cohort model in three courses. These courses will be integrated around a theme. The themes will align with learning communities that are based on the momentum year focus as well as affinity groups. Likewise, we are confident that student engagement, academic and non-academic, will be enhanced through a series of integrated, high-touch learning support based on institutional data and community needs. Interestingly, many of the learning communities will consist of living and learning communities where our freshmen will be housed together in the residence halls. Here are a few details about the learning communities, which will consist of approximately 200 freshmen within various communities in the fall. The first one that we will be launching is a pre-nursing preparation learning community. We will have one pre-nursing community for ASN students and one pre-nursing community for BSN majors. And our goal is to increase their uh, T's preparation. And then we will have a learning community for education majors. And this is the GACE program admission preparation. This learning community, the goal is to increase education students uh, probability or uh, probability of passing the GACE early. And then we will have a learning community for criminal justice. They will focus on speaking the language of criminal justice, uh, the role of language within the criminal justice system. And then we will have a learning community for STEM majors, conversations about STEM. This will focus on developing presentation skills and of course, open to all STEM majors. And then we have a learning community for males, men of distinction, being an avatar in a metaverse. This learning community is designed to help first year males adjust to academic and campus life, including identity in a technological world. Next, we have a learning community focusing on music through history, the impact of music through history. This is open to students from the Summer Success Academy. This will serve to explore genres of music that have shaped the American experience, particularly those with roots in the African diaspora. Next, we have the American Dream. This learning community is open to social science majors. This dives into the background of American politics and the history of the arts. And then last, we're looking at embracing global commerce. This learning community is open to business students. It is gonna focus on cultural and business norms for the United States and for foreign countries. So we are certainly looking forward to welcoming our first year students to University College and their living and learning communities. We're now gonna hear an update on goal number two from Vice President A.L. Fleming. He is the Vice President of University Operations and Strategic Initiatives. 
Thank you, Dr. Peters. I have the pleasure of sharing an update as it relates to HERF, the Higher Education Emergency Relief Fund, and our implementation program as it relates to it. These funds were provided by Congress to assist students directly and ensure learning continues during the COVID-19 pandemic. There were three different pieces of legislation that authorized our HERF allotments. Those dollars we ended up using included student support and institutional support. The student support came in the form of emergency grants and we used institutional support for campus infrastructure improvements, such as enhancement to our Wi-Fi system to increase the bandwidth necessary for our students and faculty, new HVAC systems to help mitigate COVID-19 and campus safety improvements to further secure our campus. Within the three pieces of legislation, specifically in HERF 1, we received a little over $10 million. In HERF 2, approximately $29 million. And finally, in HERF 3, approximately $53 million for a total of $93 million. Majority of these dollars was were used directly to support students to provide aid to them. Also, in spring of 2021, during President Frederick's strategic planning town hall, she shared her desire to invest in student success by providing our faculty and staff with many grants, innovation grants, totaling $1 million. She was so pleased based on the report from the cross campus committee of faculty and staff and their recommendations that she ended up funding $2.3 million in innovation grants. These being supported of course through our HERF dollars. <laughs> Pictured here are some of our highlights from those programs. Our enhancing exam integrity, $50,000, Ms. Dominique Hines. Trauma-Informed Care Initiative, $30,000, Dr. Annalise Gibson and Dr. Andrea Dozier. Our new ASU Mobile STEM Lab, which we're particularly proud about, will soon be procuring Dr. Robert Owar and Mr. Kenton Marinard. Then establishing viable and sustained greenhouses and raised garden beds, both on our east and west campuses, $250,000 led by Dr. Richard Foreman. And finally, bridging the gap of student success with $200,000 for Drs. Belinda Gilbert Daphne Mathis, and Viola Hughes. Please join me in congratulating these superlative faculty and staff for what they have done to create innovation opportunities to enhance overall student success at Albany State University. Later this week, we'll send a communication to the campus where you'll be able to see all of the HERF grants that have been funded that are top notch for the innovation purposes for succeeding in our student success model. With that being said, I'd like to turn the presentation back to Dr. Peters and VP Johnson mm -hmm. as they discuss a little bit about our partnerships and economic competitiveness. Like Vice President Fleming, I have the opportunity to talk about the positive financial impact to the university. We are fortunate to have multiple partnerships. And the first I will share with you is our Education Talent Search Grant totaling $1.3 million from the U.S. Department of Education. The grant is designed to provide opportunities for high school students from low-income backgrounds and first-generation populations in Doherty County. Through this program, interested students and their families will be able to take advantage of the academic, career, and financial counseling services. Additional available services include career exploration, tutorial services, information on financial assistance, college admissions, and financial aid application assistance. The college entrance exams prep, mentoring, workshops, and more. I will now turn it over to Dr. Peters, who will share with, with you two partnerships with BB Healthcare Systems and the Marine Corps Logistics Base. Dr. Peters. Thank you. Thank you, VP Johnson. We've had two community partnerships that were recently solidified by signing an MOU this month with the Marine Corps Logistics Base in Albany and Phoebe Putney Memorial Health Systems. So with Phoebe Putney Memorial Health Systems, we actually have a partnership that focuses on health sciences pathway, a pathway from 4C Academy, which is the 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade into Albany Tech and then into Albany State. We also have another MOU that we signed with Phoebe Health Systems to provide funding to meet the student to teacher classroom and clinical ratios as designated by our nursing accrediting body. This partnership has allowed us to provide stipends to ASN program faculty members, uh, to provide stipends to students, mentoring, tutoring, and to increase the overall ASN student retention rates. And then a recent MOU that we signed with the Marine Corps Logistics Base uh, includes a certificate 
in supply chain and logistics and in uh, cybersecurity. So the, the military affiliated students and the military um, will be taught by our ASU professors on the base. So our ASU professors will actually go to the base to teach courses garnering or leading to a certificate in cybersecurity and a certificate in logistics. Those that participate from the base will have the chance to take advantage of academic, career, and financial counseling services. Additional available services to the military and their military affiliate uh, student families will include things like career exploration, tutorial services, uh, financial aid application assistance, entrance exam preps, mentoring workshops, and so much more. Partnerships like these allow us to leverage our resources for the benefit of not only the university, but of the community. Now that you've heard about our partnerships and our economic competitiveness, let's get an update on goal number four from VP Fleming. Thank you, Dr. Peters. I'm excited to share a little bit about our faculty and staff compensation and classification study. This study was launched in August of 2021 with the goal of creating an institutional value proposition that would not only attract, but also recruit and retain the best in class talent here at Albany State University. The project team continues to make significant progress towards accomplishing this goal through a five phase process, which is scheduled to conclude of August of 2022. During phase one, there were focus groups and themes that were created via several virtual opportunities through cross mentoring groups of faculty and staff. The information gleaned from that helped us explore our culture, our recruitment opportunities, compensation, faculty and staff concerns, and desired outcomes. Additionally, in phase two, the position description questionnaire, often called the PDQ, concluded on March the 4th with an over 80% completion rate. This critical piece of our overall compensation and classification study will provide detailed information on the actual job duties that our staff complete daily. Upcoming and current phases of our faculty market assessment, our staff market assessment, and finally, late July and August of 2022, we should receive our report and findings and recommendations as it relates to the compensation and classification study. If there's additional information that you'd like to have about the study, please visit our HR website where you can see the various previous communications that came through ASU Info, but also detailed information regarding the addition future product of the plan. So thank you for the opportunity. And with that, President Frederick, that concludes our update and we'll turn the remainder of the presentation back to you. I love that I had myself muted, my apologies. Um, thank you, VP Johnson and Dr. Peters and uh, VP Fleming. And so our next topic we're gonna go into on some updates are for physical affairs. And I wanted to make sure I bring that update forward to, to answer any questions there as we go through as well. And so as any uh, leadership transition goes, when a leader is transitioning, you tend to do a deep dive into the department to make, things are, make sure things are working as they should be great opportunity for more process improvement and we have actually already started that as you may recall uh, mr john clemens who was at asu before um, came back to help us and mr Clip, uh, mr clemens decided that let's go back up one decided that uh retirement was really nice and so he's gone back into retirement what we have um i've now invited uh mr bruce spratt to come back to albany state as the vice president for finance and administration Many of you may know Bruce as he's worked at ASU before. So he's worked at ASU in the past, um, getting us through a couple of, of challenges and he's back now to help us kind of navigate to the next leader in physical affairs. And I wanna take you all back as well to the changes that have already happened because you all participated in that. As we had our uh, physical affairs department to actually do training, significant training for over a hundred people 
Um, and we wanted that to happen because what we realized is we have invoices delayed, maybe procurement delayed. Part of that was the the lack of resources in physical affairs, but a large part of it was also the process. And um, we needed to make sure that everyone knew the process and knew how to go through actually doing accounts payable and other things. And so that training has happened and we'll continue to do training, not just for the power users, but we're also gonna do training for our um, leadership teams as well. And so thank you to our physical affairs department for actually making that that, uh, training happen already. And next, let me get back to that slide, Eric. Next, I'm gonna actually talk a little bit about our wonderful staff council, which has been selected. They have re-engaged with the the university, which is great. Um, We've always had a a good faculty, I'm sorry, good staff council that got delayed a little bit as we were kind of getting things uh, going. And I would love to say that we now have an awesome staff council team on board that is helping us to actually manage and work through um, our staff questions and and help us with our staff as well. So staff council is a peer elected committee and it represents all the staff in the university. And their role is to promote a better understanding of staff policies, benefits, increased engagement, open communication um, among the constituents group on campus. So please join me in welcoming the new officers President James A. Brown from Enrollment Management and Student Success. Um, We have Secretary Leslie Charles, Human Resources uh, Training and Development Coordinator, and Treasurer Shanice Leonard, Enrollment Management and Student Success Academic Advisor. The Staff Council is currently holding special election to fill the position of Vice President. So voting will close on this Friday, April the 29th at 5 p.m. I encourage you to please participate to vote um, on the next exceptional leader to take on this role for the next academic year. And the Faculty Senate is also a peer elected committee that evaluates and recommends academic policies and practices. And the Senate Executive Committee will be President Dr. Mark Thomas, Assistant Professor for Sociology and Psychology. He'll remain president for the new academic year. Vice President Dr. Corrine Sweet, Associate Professor of School of Business, Professor for the School of Business, Secretary, Dr. Carrie Tanner, Professor of Health Sciences. And so as we, and welcome to each and every one of you. As we begin to conclude this semester, thank you for your diligent work, for your questions, and for your time today. Because of you, our institution is actually able to fulfill its mission and support our students as we go into the summer. So I look forward to celebrating with many, if not all of you, for the upcoming graduation uh, this weekend, next weekend. Graduation is a celebratory time of the year to recognize the achievements of our students. And as we celebrate, I wanna make sure that you all remain safe. Uh, We wanna make sure that as you're doing your celebrations, you think about who you're bringing to campus, make sure that they are being safe and that you're being safe um, and that we're all watching out for each other. And so now that we've finished our updates, we're going to start the Q&A session. Um, Remember, you can put questions in the chat um, on YouTube. We also have a whole set of questions that that were already submitted, and we're going to go ahead and start with those questions. So those questions will come up on the screen, and we'll go through and answer those questions. And again, if there are questions we can't answer, we will get those answers back to you, and we'll also post them on our site as well. So can we get the first question? And I have the team here to help me get those answered. All right, how will students be invited to learning community communities? Dr. Peters? Yeah, I'll take that. Thanks, President uh, Frederick. Uh, students are invited to learning communities. We have already sent out thousands and thousands of letters uh, detailing the learning community and inviting students to participate in a learning community based off of them being accepted into ASU. So those students who have been accepted into ASU for the fall, those freshmen, they have received an invitation letter inviting them to learning communities. Another recruitment um, tactic is that our interim um, um, university college director, Raven Payne, has visited many uh, local high schools, has visited many classrooms in local high schools to talk about learning communities to potential ASU students. Uh, Ram Central has also sent out e-blasts to many potential students. So through face-to-face meetings with students, 
their principals, counselors, through letters, sending letters to ASU students who have been accepted, and through eBLAST, we have contacted and are recruiting students to talk to them about learning communities and inviting them into our learning communities. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Peters. All right, next question. Oh, we already have someone to sign. How is the COLA pay raise being distributed moving forward? Mr. Fleming? Thank you, President Frederick. Uh, the cost of living adjustment, also known as COLA, were distributed to our biweekly employees in their first paycheck in April and will conclude with their second one in April. Our monthly employees should receive theirs on April the 29th. Going forward, effective July the 1st, that $5,000 that we each receive based on proration, based on the time of service with Albany State or with the state of Georgia, will be $5,000 a month. Uh, $5,000 annually, annualized. So we'll divide that over either your 10 month time period or your 12 month time period over the appointment here at Albany State. And I know that's a lot of information, but should you have any further questions about it, feel free to call us here in University Operations or in the Human Resources Department and we'll be able to address your specific concern. But thank you, President Federer. All right. And what are the COVID-19 policies moving forward um, Mr. Fleming, you mind taking that one as well? No, ma'am, not at all. Uh, certainly what we're going to continue to do here under President Frederick's leadership is follow the recommendations both from the University System of Georgia, the Georgia Department of Public Health, and of course what the Centers for Disease Control recommend. What we continue to encourage our employees to do is to wash your hands regularly uh, as much as you can. You follow the guidance that's provided through ASU Info that is designed to be able to keep you safe, but we'll continue with our enhanced cleaning protocols for the foreseeable future to ensure that we're having a clean and safe campus community. Thank you, President Federer. All right, how were the innovation grants selected and funded? Will there be an opportunity for new grants in the future? It's a great question. Um, I'll take that question actually. So the innovation grants, if you recall, and Mr. Fleming mentioned this earlier, um, I actually did a call for innovation grants when we launched our strategic plan last year. Um, we had multiple people to actually apply for in innovation grants. Um, I can't remember the total number that we approved, but it was well over the million dollars that I'd offered um, to do for innovation grants. As Mr. Fleming said, it's close to $2.3 million. So those grants were actually selected by a committee. So we had a committee to actually go through each one of those grant submittals. Um, they produced for me a list that they approved uh, approved of. We reviewed that together as well. And that's how we got that, that first list of innovation grants. And will there be an opportunity for new grants in the future? Um, you know, I have to actually say I'm not sure. We actually used uh, HERF dollars as well to fund these innovation grants to a certain extent, some. Um, and so I'm not quite sure of the funding that we'll have available, but I will absolutely make sure that we continue to look at how we could possibly fund additional innovation grants. And I just have to say that there, there were some great ideas, um, a lot of great information that came forward. So thank you for submitting those. And hopefully everyone is fully engaged in their project if it was approved. What safety measures are currently being taken and will be taken next semester to keep the campus community safe? Um, Mr. Fleming, we can tag team on that, but I'm gonna let you get started. Certainly, no problem. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, this is an important subject, certainly to the president and the leadership team. And what we've already done, you've seen across both campuses, is we've uh, added additional entry points, if you will, information kiosks, as we call them. And we work with our campus uh, safety department, campus police department, to ensure that those are manned at prime hours, at those top hours where individuals are entering the campus. In addition to that, we've also added a degree of fencing, and you'll see some other construction this summer on the ASU East Campus as it relates to continuing to ensure that on the campus proper, we have dedicated entrances and exits. But one other critical component we could do as well, our colleague in student affairs, Dr. Terry Lindsay, and his work with our students is to ensure that all of us, both employees and students are being considerate of who we bring onto the campus, when we bring them onto the campus. And as always, if there's a concern, we should always contact 430-4711, contact campus police 
if there's any time that we see that there may be a challenge arising related to campus safety. So we're doing a great deal in this regard. We have a campus safety and security committee that meets regularly as well to make those enhancements and improvements. And again, HERF dollars were utilized to help fortify the campus infrastructure to make the campus safe. But I think the first thing to say is the responsibility starts with each of us and that we, in this regard, have to be each other's brother and sister's keeper to ensure that we're keeping our campus community safe. Thank you, President Federer. Absolutely. All right, and let me also add, um, and I said this towards the end, we all have a part in, in the safety of our campus. And I want to say to our students and to others, um, let's be very careful who we invite to be on campus. Um, let's be careful of our surroundings. We're doing all that we can um, to make sure that we are safe. I would love to hear any ideas that you all may have about being safe. I've gotten some of those ideas from our students already um, about how to particularly make crossing the street at Radium Springs, how to make that safer for our students. And just to let you know, we're working very closely with the city of Albany to make sure, and the Department of Transportation to make and implement some of those changes. Our chief, um, Chief Allen, is also working on some opportunities as well. And so from a communication standpoint, making sure that we have easy access to that communications. So we have a lot of people who are working on the safety. Um, we can't do it by ourselves. So if you have ideas, please let us know and we'll work towards whether or not we can actually implement those ideas. But we're trying to be as safe as we can and we're implementing as much as we can. So let us know if there's something that we're, we're not seeing or there's something that you would like to see us do. When is the next town hall meeting? Um, I actually don't have that date in front of me, but it would absolutely be, I think, during the faculty staff conference. Um, do we have a different day? I think, it's, yeah, faculty staff conference in August will be our next town hall meeting. When will the simulation lab open and what type of training will health science students be exposed to with the lab? Um, Dr. Peters and Dr. Fleming, y'all tag team on that one? Yeah. Fleming, you want to tell them when it will open? Sure. Sure. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. From a design, planning, and construction standpoint, we're excited. Uh, we should break ground on the new simulation center here on the West Campus in October of 2022. And certainly, Dr. Peters, I'll defer to you as it relates to the great work our health sciences students will be doing in that facility once it's fully operational. Thank you, VP Fleming. So I am so excited about this simulation lab. This is going to be a multidisciplinary simulation center for nursing and all healthcare program students. So listen up, one side of the building will function as a simulated hospital from ambulance arrival to discharge home. The other side of the building will function as an outpatient clinic and rehab setting for our therapy disciplines. We're even gonna include an activities of daily living suite. The building is gonna serve as a simulated experience for all healthcare program students. And we are so excited about it. What was HERF 1, 2, and 3 funding used for? Now, we just went over some of those, but um, Mr. Fleming, why don't you just give us another summary of that? And we will actually uh, go a step further and make sure that we have some of that information that's, that may not already be out there, out there on what those projects actually are. Um, and it's more than just the innovation projects. There's a lot that we've actually used our funding for. Mr. Fleming, can you go over that for me? Yes, ma'am. One item that I know is of particular uh, excitement for both you and VP Johnson is our new uh, mobile enrollment trailer, if you will. So what we'll be able to do, certainly related to the pandemic and some of our students or prospective students not being able to attend the make it to the university, we'll be able to go on the road, if you will, colleagues, and share uh, the great news about Albany State and assist students in completing their enrollment uh, through this new mobile trailer, if you will, that we'll have available in the foreseeable future. Additionally, we continue to make improvements to our campus facilities, which you may have saw this past fall would have been some work at Hartnett, at the Catherine Hartnett Criminal Justice Building, at Peace Hall, and also in the Reese, uh, J.C. Reese Student Union Building. So we continue to make physical improvements to the campus as it relates to those opportunities to ensure that we're having a clean and safe environment. 
And so there are a lot of fantastic things we're doing with her one, two, and three. And as President Frederick indicated, she's certainly open to other ideas about how we can do things to certainly help our students continue to learn through the pandemic and ensure our faculty and staff are safe. And again, any ideas on her, please let us know. Um, we still have some funds that we need to expend. Uh, so let us know if there's some ideas that we haven't gotten so far. Uh, what is the date of the next faculty staff conference? Dr. Peters, you probably know that date right off the tip of your tongue, don't you? Absolutely. August 4th and, 4th and 5th. Stay tuned for more exciting details. Uh, who plays a role in the chancellor of the USG selection? Do the students of the universities have a say so? So the selection of the chancellor is done by the Board of Regents. So the Board of Regents actually makes that selection on, uh, on who the chancellor will be. And hopefully you all uh, got the messages and the request to be a part of the town halls. So I think March of 2021, they held multiple town halls to get feedback on uh, the, the the competencies for the chancellor, um, uh, kind of desires, what we wanted to see as a chancellor, they actually collected feedback. Um, one of the things that they've also done is they're working closely with our student advisory committees, also our faculty uh, senate uh, uh, presidents as well. So they've been working with those resources throughout that process and hopefully will continue to do so. Um, hopefully what you also have seen is that since the chancellor has been on board, uh, Chancellor Purdue has actually had the opportunity to meet with all of the students and well, the, the presidents of the SGA across the university system. That was actually his first meeting. One of his first meetings was with the SGA presidents um, and we'll hopefully we'll continue to do that as well. So definitely had an opportunity to provide feedback there. Uh, if you need more opportunity to provide feedback, um, well, the chancellor is already selected, of course. He actually was on our campus a couple of weeks ago. Um, took pictures with our students and engaged with our students as well. So that process has been complete. Um, and just let us know whether or not you need more, you have more questions or need more information in that way. Okay. When will the university ob observe the Juneteenth holiday? I'm not sure if we've sent that email out yet. Um, I don't have my calendar. I would think it would be Juneteenth. Yeah. But what's our date, our actual date? Yes, ma'am. Uh, this is AAL, AAL here. We'll observe it on Monday, June the 20th. And you're correct, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. June 10th will be on June 19th. All right. And we'll send out, we'll make sure we get, if we haven't gotten the letters out, we'll make sure we get a letter out from HR on that holiday. So for those of you who don't know, um, two weeks ago, while the Board of Regents were here at the University at uh, ASU, they actually passed um, a policy that said that we would follow uh, the, the policies of the state when it came to holidays. And the state actually added Juneteenth as a holiday. And of course, we are happy to add that to the schedule as well and observe that um, on June the 20th. So an extra holiday has been added to uh, the University System of Georgia policies. And we're, we're glad to have that. All right, will the university observe compressed summer hours? When will the hours be shared? We had a great conversation about this in cabinet yesterday. So you'll see the, the smiles on our cabinet team. And what I'm going to do instead of, ask, of actually telling you when that's going to be, I'm going to ask our cabinet members on the, on the call to make a decision or talk about what we decided on Tuesday. But yes, they, you. we will have compressed summer hours. But give some details, please. Ladies first, please. Right, don't let me get in the way. <laughs> But but no, so yes, ma'am. So we uh, have uh, adopted a new compressed summer schedule that will begin on Monday, May the 9th, right after commencement uh, through July 29th, with the exception of the aforementioned holidays, of course, Memorial Day, uh, Juneteenth now, and the 4th of July. And so the compressed schedule will be Monday through Thursday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., where 10 hour, four 10-hour workdays. Now, of course, as President Federicks indicated, each requisite cabinet member has the opportunity to adjust the schedule as it relates to institutional operations for their units. But thank you very much, President Federicks. Any feedback, Dr. Peters, VP Johnson? No, no, ma'am. He said it. No, ma'am. I'm sure our staff is very excited. <laughs> 
I think everyone was very excited. So yes, we will do compressed um, summer hours and that will begin the Monday after graduation. And we will get that message out as well after the town hall meeting. All right, that may be our last question. Do we have any other questions? We're gonna put it up here. One second. We're trying to pull one question off. They've texted to me. Okay, I have it. Um, what role will psych majors have in the involvement of the SIM Center? So Dr. Peters, can I let you handle that one? Psychology majors? Yes. Is that Okay. Um, I don't see psychology majors having a major role in the development of the SIM Center because the SIM Center, again, is going to focus on the health professions major. However, uh, that does not preclude psychology majors from helping us as we brainstorm on new ideas uh, and how to include other students and other majors in the STEM Center. I hope that kind of helped. And I would encourage um, whoever submitted that question, give us a little bit more on what you're thinking. Um, and right. we can we can get a little bit more detail with you, but just, just give us a little more about what you're thinking, and we can go from there. Okay. All right, oh, okay. Think, okay. I'm sorry, President. So they said STEM Center. It should be Simulation Center. So perhaps yeah. that's where. That, okay. So it's Simulation Center, which is which is mainly focusing on health professions. Mm -hmm. yep. All right. I think that is our the last question I'm seeing online here. Um, and as we wrap up, you know, I want to tell the team thank you for making sure that we are providing this information. And of course, we'll always be available to to ask the questions, or I'm sorry, to answer the questions um, that you may have. And as we get towards in the semester, I do just want to say thank you again. Um, again, the last couple of years I know have been extremely difficult, but we've pushed really hard and. And you all have really shown, really the whole state, how well we are doing with our mission, making sure we get our students in and making sure all of that works. So thank you as we wrap up the semester. And I look forward to seeing you all at commencement. Have a great evening.